Back in 1930 to 1937, Cadillac produced V12 powered vehicles that are surely known as classics today. Slotted just below the V16 powered cars in Cadillac's lineup, these V12 powered Cadillacs were certainly premium automobiles despite being one level down from the V16s and they are highly prized by collectors today. And while many recognize the existence of these V12 powered Cadillacs from 1930 to 1937, there's another Cadillac V12 that embraced that heritage that many don't know about. And that is a single overhead cam, yes, an overhead cam, Cadillac derived and engineered V12 engine that was slated to go under hood in the 1967 Cadillac Eldorado. As previously mentioned, Cadillac had a significant heritage of producing V12 powered vehicles, but the V12 that was produced from 1930 to 1937 was a bit different than this configuration. More specifically, the original Cadillac V12 had a 45 degree bank angle and its valves were controlled by the typical overhead valve design as opposed to overhead cam design. However, when it came to the new Cadillac V12 that was to be introduced in the 1967 Eldorado, Cadillac engineers came up with a few different items. The first of which was that this particular V12 would have a 60 degree bank angle, which was a more optimal bank angle for V12s than the original 45 degree engine back in the 30s. The second is that the engine would have single overhead cams driving its valve train. Now recognize at this time that General Motors had not produced an overhead cam engine in production vehicles, and a number of its divisions were experimenting with such designs. Cadillac was one, but Pontiac was also another division that was experimenting with overhead cam designs. Although in the case of Pontiac, it was experimenting with overhead cam engines with respect to V8 powertrains, not V12s. In any event, Cadillac Engineering produced a number of prototypes of this V12 engine in the mid-1960s. The overhead cams had chain drives, and there were a couple other interesting features of the engines. There were also a number of prototypes built in different displacements, the largest of which was 500 cubic inches, or essentially the same size as the engine that would arrive in 1970 in the Eldorados. Of course, the 1967 Eldorado was introduced with Cadillac's already existing 429 cubic inch V8 before a new engine was introduced in 1968, and that was Cadillac's 472 cubic inch V8, which would be expanded to 500 cubic inches in the Eldorados in 1970. In any event, the single overhead cam Cadillac V12s as I mentioned, had chain drive as opposed to belt drive, something that would be used on Pontiac's overhead cam six-cylinder. And they also had twin distributors to fire the spark plugs. One distributor sat on either side of the V-bank, and they were driven by the camshaft sprockets. Various forms of carburation were tried on this engine, including two four-barrels, a single four-barrel carburetor, and even rumors of three two-barrel carburetors. Output ranged from around 300 horsepower to around 400 horsepower, allegedly, on the prototypes. In the V12 picture that you see here, there are also some interesting things about the accessory drive. Notice that the typical GM Frigidaire A6 air conditioning compressor has a deep groove pulley on it, perhaps to try to keep the belt on the pulley when the engine is spinning at higher RPMs, which would be enabled by the single overhead cam. Of course, Cadillac's typical overhead valve V8 engines and GM's overhead valve V8 engines really didn't rev that high unless they had mechanical valve lifters like in some Corvette engines or high-performance Chevrolet big blocks or even Pontiac high-performance engines. But for Cadillac, a high-revving engine, no matter what the configuration, was something that was a rare occurrence and this deep groove pulley was likely required to keep the passengers cool while stepping on the throttle with their extremely powerful V12 engine under hood. Based on conversations with first-hand designers who worked on the 1967 Eldorado, including Wayne Cady, whose video interview on the 1967 Eldorado you can see in the comments section, Cadillac was very serious about putting this V12 in the 1967 Eldorado. And in fact, the chance to have this V12 engine under hood actually 
gave the Eldorado some of its styling features for the 1967 model year. More specifically, the prominent bulge on the hood on the 1967 Eldorado, which would become a feature of subsequent Eldorados and Cadillacs as well, really was there to help accommodate the V12 underhood and enable it fitting in that packaging space. So what happened to the V12 and why was it dropped? Well, there's not really a clear record of why Cadillac Engineering elected not to go with the V12 in any particular instance, but we can make a number of speculations based on what is known at the time. First is that this overhead cam V12 engine was going to be quite costly compared to the standard 429 cubic inch V8 that ended up under hood of the 1967 Eldorado. And yes, cost was a factor, even for Cadillac back then. You have to remember that the Cadillac Eldorado was going to be front wheel drive, and the front wheel drive transmission, transaxle, and setup was going to cost General Motors about $500 per vehicle. That's about $5,000 in today's terms, more than a standard rear wheel drive setup. So the cost of the vehicle was already relatively expensive compared to its price point in the marketplace. And this, by the way, was one of the reasons that Buick did not elect to go with the front-wheel drive setup on its Riviera and, frankly, was able to have a much better riding car and price it in the same range as the Tornado and Eldorado. So cost was one factor. Another element was simply the fact that Cadillac believed that it could get a similar amount of horsepower by developing a new V8 style engine that could also be shared across other Cadillacs and that it just didn't need a V12 to get something near 400 horsepower. In fact, this was the case. And in 1968, the Cadillac 472 cubic inch engine produced 375 horsepower up from the 1967 engine's 340 horsepower. And in 1970, that 472 was enlarged to 500 cubic inches, as I previously mentioned, and it did make 400 horsepower. So from a horsepower perspective, there really wasn't an advantage of having the V12 underhood over a typical V8 engine. And the V8 engine could be used and produced in volume in other Cadillacs. It didn't have to be unique to the Eldorado. Third was simply a desire for Cadillac to have engines that were less complicated because they would be more durable. Durability and resale value was one of the principal reasons why owners bought Cadillacs in the 1960s and 1970s. And anybody who's owned a Cadillac 472 cubic inch or 500 cubic inch engine knows that those engines are super, super reliable. While some other GM V8s have trouble with water pumps and timing chains, the Cadillac V8s are pretty gosh darn robust and almost never have severe failures. There are some instances where there are some minor failure points of that particular engine, but a lot of the key things that failed on other General Motors engines of the time really never failed on those big Cadillac V8s. So a customer could get not only the horsepower afforded by the V12, Cadillac could not only save some money, but they would also get a very reliable power plant if they were able to use a V8 engine as opposed to this, let's call it experimental, overhead cam V12 engine with dual distributors and a lot of fancy technology that frankly had not been proven by General Motors Engineering up until that point. Admittedly, one of the advocates for this V12 engine came from a very strange area of the corporation. And that was allegedly Bill Mitchell in GM Design. Now, why would a designer be interested in what's under hood as opposed to the exterior styling? Well, Mr. Mitchell, as he was known in the building, was a big fan of Ferraris, in particular Ferraris with V12 engines under hood. In some cases, he allegedly even took General Motors vehicles and replaced the engines with Ferrari V12s to demonstrate to engineers what he thought a car would sound like. And so... Allegedly, again, there's not great documentation for this, but he was one of the advocates of this engine in Cadillacs. Of course, he ended up losing that battle, but the 1967 Eldorado became arguably one of the best-looking Cadillacs ever produced. And the whole 1967-70 to 70 Eldorado generation is just a sublime testament to Bill Mitchell and the Cadillac team's ability to design wonderful vehicles. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on Cadillac's V12.
from the mid-1960s. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.